Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. So I read this, well it was a reread for Catalyst Reads Rereadathon. The prompt for August was to reread, I think, poetry collection or a short story or something like that. So I went for some more Sherlock Holmes. We listened to the audiobook again. This time we got the Stephen Fry ones that everyone's been raving about and it was very good. Let me just do this, there we go, so I can see my notes. So... It's a bit different to how I normally do my reviews because normally I tab them out and I flick back through and I guess just pull out what I think about the bit that I've tabbed, uh, tabbed out. Whereas because I listened to it via an audiobook, I just kept written notes on my computer so I'll be going through those. Before we get started, I'm going to read the blurb. Sherlock Holmes was transformed when he was hot upon such a scent as this. Men who had only known the quiet thinker and logician of Baker Street would have failed to recognise him. His face flushed and darkened. His brows were drawn into two hard black lines, while his eyes shone out from beneath them with a steely glitter. Set against the foggy, mysterious backdrops of London and the English countryside, these are the first 12 stories ever published to feature the infamous Detective Sherlock Holmes and his sidekick, Dr. Watson. They first appeared as stories in the Strand magazine and feature some of his most famous and enjoyable cases, including A Scandal in Bohemia, The Adventure of the Blue Carbuncle, and The Red-Headed League. I'll let you know what other stories are in here, actually, as well. The Speckled Band was in here, well, The Adventure of the Speckled Band, rather, was in here as well. What else do we got? What did it say? Alright, I'll just read the whole lot out. We've got A Scandal in Bohemia, The Red-Headed League, A Case of Identity, The Boscombe Valley Mystery, The Five Orange Pips, The Man with the Twisted Lip, The Adventure of the Blue Carbuncle, The Adventure of the Speckled Band, The Adventure of the Engineer's Thumb, The Adventure of the Noble Bachelor, The Adventure of the Beryl Coronet, The Adventure of the Copper Breaches. So, I'm just going to go through my notes here. So, we'll start with uh, A Scandal in Bohemia. So, uh, when uh, Watson goes to visit Holmes, Holmes tells Watson he's put on seven pounds, maybe a trifle more, and says married life suits him. It started out the mood of the whole book with some of Holmes' observations. You know, when he first meets somebody and he tells that person about themselves based on what he can see. And I think that is a great way to kick off the whole book and the whole collection. We also have one of his famous quotes here, and, uh, and it goes, I have no data yet. It is a capital mistake to theorise before one has data. Insensibly, one begins to twist facts to suit theories instead of theories to suit facts. And it's interesting as well how this story is a lot about classism. So, basically, we have the King of Bohemia in there. We also have Irene Adler, who recurs a few times. And she's not of the right level for the King of, of Bohemia. So, uh, he, he can't marry her. Moving swiftly on, the Red-Headed League. I wondered if this inspired the Red Mist in Ideal, because... In Ideal, this TV show, this British TV show about a drug dealer living in Manchester, there is a gang called the Red Mist and they all have red hair, very much like the legend in this of the Red-Headed League. So I wonder whether the show's creator kind of did a little nod to this there. Um, it's still one of my favourite Holmes stories. I like there was a line in it as well. They got some Napoleons from a bank in France. So... Um, Basically, though, that was what they referred to as the coins, you know, and they had Napoleon on. We have a case of identity, a great quote from this that I'm going to read out. Life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man could invent. We would not dare to conceive the things which are really mere commonplaces of existence. If we could fly out of that window hand in hand, hover over this great city, gently remove the roofs and peep in at the queer things which are going on, the strange coincidences, the plannings, the cross purposes, the wonderful chains of events, working through generations and leading to the most outre results, it would make all fiction with its conventionalities and foreseen conclusions most stale and unprofitable. And actually we studied that quote as part of uh, a London and literature course that I studied at uni and we had to use it for essays and stuff. The story itself is weirdly incestuous. It's a good job the guy is only her stepdad because he basically dresses up and then woos his stepdaughter. Spoiler alert. <laughs> so that she goes to the wedding, dude doesn't show up and then, you know, she stays with her parents because otherwise if she marries somebody she takes her inheritance and whatnot away from them. There's also some early forensics in this, so Holmes knew that every typewriter is different and that typewritten paper is, ident is as identifiable as someone's handwriting. 
you know, typewriters basically have their own fingerprints. In the Boscombe Valley mystery, my main takeaway from this was the quote, there is nothing more deceptive than an obvious fact. So we'll move on to the five orange pips. That one has a bit of unintentional dramatic irony because the character doesn't recognize the initials KKK. And obviously for me as a modern reader, you hear KKK and you kind of, there is that one obvious, uh, you know, association of the Ku Klux Klan, which is what it turns out to be. But, um, I mean, it doesn't hamper the story. It's just strange how there's this, un like, say, unintentional kind of dramatic irony. And I was talking to people recently, and they were, you know, there's this big debate of should you review a book like this with modern sensibilities? So, for example, uh, in The Man with the Twisted Lip, uh, someone, someone was woken by a sudden ejaculation, but nothing remained of the heap of shag. And, like, both of those have, th those have connotations to a modern reader. And I argue... You know, I'm not reviewing this and trying to pretend that I'm in the 1800s or whatever. I'm reviewing it with my personal take as a modern reader and the context of my life. So, I don't know. I think you should mention stuff like that. And so, I think it is worth mentioning that, you know, that it, it was weird reading about the initials KKK and nobody knew it, knowing what they meant. But it, it didn't hamper the story, like I say. In The Adventure of the Blue Carbuncle, there was a reference to there being 4 million Londoners. And I wondered how many there are now, so we're going to ask. Hey Google, how many people live in London? The population of London, United Kingdom was 8,135,667 as of 2011. So it's doubled since then. It's interesting. We have The Adventure of the Speckled Band. And... Uh, <laughs> So Watson wakes up with Holmes standing over him, fully clothed, which I thought was a funny way of putting it. It's just a bit weird. You'd be like, what are you, do what are you doing? But um, it then actually works really well because the story ends with Watson and Holmes standing over a bed, fully clothed. And uh, Holmes says he can see deeply into the manifold wickedness that is the human heart. And this is the one with... Um, there is a, a, a young woman in bed and uh, she dies and she goes, The band! The speckled band! And nobody knows what it means. And uh, it turns out to be a reference like a snake that is going through the... I don't, I don't want to tell you anymore in case that is a spoiler. Moving on to the adventure of the engineer's thumb. It's about an engineer who literally lost his thumb. Sorry, what an adventure. It uses hydraulics in there as well. Which is quite interesting for the time. It almost feels steampunky reading it. Um, you know, this Victorian hydraulic system. There's also this horrible bit. Absolutely horrible. Where um, this hydraulic hydraulic press is coming down. And this guy's like trapped in it. And he's trying to decide. Should I lie on my, on my front? But then it'll snap my spine. And my spine will go. Or should I lie on my back? And then it'll crush my head. And then I'll, I'll be, be saved. And it's just like, oh, imagine having to make that choice. He mentions the little Berkshire village of Reading. It's not so little anymore. I also thought Holmes was delightfully insensitive. Because he's just, this guy's just talked about losing his thumb. And Holmes just is talking about the mystery. And he says he thinks he can put his finger on it. And it's like, mate, the guy's just lost his thumb. We have the adventure of the noble bachelor. And uh, Holmes... Holmes gets this thing in the post and he goes, This looks like one of those social summonses that force one to either be bored or to lie. And that is like me when you get Facebook event invites. We have the adventure of the Beryl Coronet. In that one, we have the classic quote where he says, Once you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. And then finally, of course, we end on the adventure of the copper breaches. There is a great quote in that as well. Data, data, data. I can't make bricks without clay. And um, there's a character as well where they, they made her cut her hair to get a job, which reminded me of when I used to work at my, my first company, a company called Noble. Uh, I didn't have to cut my hair to get the job, but my boss basically threatened to fire me unless I had a haircut because I was growing my hair out like this. And uh, yeah. They were a PR agency working in the beauty industry, so there isn't much much scope for people who look like me there. But now I'm self-employed, so who cares? And then finally, there was a line where he talked about exactly similar circumstances, which is a weird line, because surely they've either got to be exactly the same circumstances or similar circumstances. You couldn't have them both. But anyway, 
Those were my random thoughts as we went through it. Hopefully this has worked. I don't even know if this counts as a review. It's a good book. You should read... I mean, it's a classic. You should read all the Holmes books. This one, I'm going to rate it... I'll give it a 4.5 out of 5. A strong 4.5 out of 5. Probably a 5, to be honest. Let's, let's be honest. It's Sherlock Holmes, and it's, it's one of the good ones. I always like the short stories. So, yeah. Go ahead and, and check it out. So, anyway, on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book, and if so, what you thought about it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.